This is a video about the state of Apps Script on GitHub today. A little while ago, the Apps Script team introduced a thing called Clasp, which is a way to use your favorite IDE to develop Apps Script offline. Previously, we were using the built-in IDE of Apps Script. Now, not only have they done the Clasp opportunity, but they've also introduced a new IDE recently, which is pretty good as well. So as a result of all of that, there's more and more Apps Script developers are putting their code on GitHub whether it's library code or just regular projects that they've done. And that means there's plenty of opportunities now for people to learn from other people, from real, real life examples and real use cases. The trouble with all of that is it's quite difficult to, to find these things. So we're going to look today at a way of navigating through public projects on GitHub that are App Script related. So just to see where we are, you can see that we've now got quite a number of developers, 1305, who are putting their projects on github which is which is nice and the number of repos that those guys have been generating is 1892 and we've got almost 3,000 projects there and loads of libraries so let's have a look at the growth i've only been tracking this for a few weeks so you can see that over the course of what's this six weeks we've seen a significant increase in the number of people putting the projects there the repos that they're putting and the projects that they are putting within those repos. So lots of good stuff and it would be great if we could just find them, find what they did and what they were about. So this is what this video is about. So what we have here is a visualization of all the app script projects that exist on GitHub. So lots of them. You'll see over here that we can filter on many things to find the kind of projects that we're after. So let's look at my ones on here. So these are my projects that are on GitHub. There's quite a number of them, as you can see. So what's nice about this visualization is that I'm able to see about me, for example. So we can see lots of things about me. Some, some of this stuff's been picked up from GitHub. Other stuff I've been able to create a profile, which I'll talk about later, describing things that I want to emphasize. And then we've got some tags at the bottom about the types of things that I specialize in. So if you wanted to hire me, and I'm actually not available for hire, but many people on here are, then this would be a place you could go to find out things I've done and the types of things that I'm used to doing. So let's get rid of my filter on that. Now let's say that I wanted to look at a particular library. That's always a good thing that people want to do. So I have a library called Cgoa. There's quite a number of versions of these libraries in use by various people I don't know who at the moment. So over here, we've got the people that are using it. And over here, we've got the, pro the repos in which it's being used. Right now, you can see we're only going up to repo level. Uh, this guy is using it, and so is this guy. So we can see, if we want to, we can say, hey, you know what? This is interesting. You're using my library, but it would be great if you were to update to the latest version so I can know, I can contact him through here if I want to. Now, this only goes up to repo level as you can see but obviously within repos you can have multiple projects so it would be good if we could see some more details so we'll just do that and now we're seeing that there's only one project in each of these but this one's got three projects associated with it now we can get even more detail if we if we want so we can do that so now we're being able to see these are all my repos these are the projects within that within each repo and these are the characteristics of the project. So I can see which libraries I'm using, which advanced services I'm using and so on. And then within that, we can see the versions of things that we're using. So let's look at someone else here. Let's look at this guy. And we can see he's using Seagull version 30. And if we turn tips on, we'll get a bit more information about it. So I can see I've actually got the library ID here, which is kind of handy. I can copy that and go there. This is some more information about the libraries, he, all the libraries he's using in this project. I'm sure you recognize this is from his appscript.json. I can look at the specific project, and here it is, all the details about the project. So I can use this to go and look at the project on GitHub, and here is all about it. And the appscript.json that you could see is, of course, here. Let's go back over to the app. So this is the contents of that appscript.json re reproduced here. Another cool thing is if I wanted to send someone a link to this particular page, then I could copy this link here. Let's go there. And now if I send this to someone, then it's going to bring up the exact same thing as I saw earlier. So it's a very good way to share your projects with people. You can just send them that link. Close that down, go back to the other instance that we were on. 
Now, of course, the, 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 the key thing about this is that we're able to go ahead and create a copy of this project in AppScript directly from this app. So to be able to do that, you've got to be logged in to your Google account and allow it to create an AppScript project, of course. And you also need to authorize it to be able to go and look at GitHub. So I'm logged in at the moment, as you can see up here, so it's not asking me, but let's clear that. Let's log out and bring up this project again. Now you'll notice it wants me to authorize, so I'm going to say, yeah, that's good. You can do that, and I'm in. And then I'm going to need to authorize it to GitHub, which I've now done. And now I can configure the project. Now what configure is going to do for me is to go off and look for his project, show me what's in it, allow me to pick files I would like it to, to copy over into a new project is going to create for me and go ahead and do that. But first of all, the very important question is whether or not Martin would allow me to do that. So this is a good time to go and visit the project and see if there's any kind of a license thing that says you can't do that. I can see he's got a license and I can pick whatever files I need. It defaults to some that you're likely to need in your AppScript project, but of course you can take others as well. So I'm just going to take the default ones. Uh, will this be a container bound project? If I was creating a project that belonged inside some kind of a, a Google document, well, let's do that. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to pick a document and then I would pick a spreadsheet, whatever, from my, from my drive. So let's close that down because it's not going to be that. And it's going to call it this. I can call it something else if I want, and I'll create that now. So it's created this project. I can copy the script URL if I want, or I can just go directly there. So let's do that. And here we have it. There's the code. And it's now my project to do with what I want. And not only that, it's included the libraries that were needed, and in, indeed the service that was needed as well. That's all there is to it. I've copied this project. So we'll kill that. And I'm looking at this level of data, this level of detail. Then you can see there's a huge number of nodes it needs to create 8,512, it looks like, um, which is a big job for a browser to do in the, in the DOM, um, which is why you've got the opportunity to you know, show less. And by default, it won't show all this stuff anyway. Right, so we're back at the minimum. I'm, I'm going to turn off these tips and we'll get rid of this. Um, before we do that, one more thing which is this hireable filter, because you may be here because you're looking for someone who has got experience in a particular thing because you want him to help you with something. So let's do that. So if we look at here, this is the scope. So let's say you want somebody who knows who's done a project using the calendar service. We're going to do that. All these different calendar things we're going to choose. That'll do. So now we see all the project, all the people who have done projects, including that scope. And you can pick other stuff as well, but you can play around with this for yourself and find out. Now, the thing is that all these people might not be hireable. So if, if we look at some of these guys, we can see that not available for hire, not available for hire, et cetera, et cetera. There's somebody that is. So what we do here is we'd say, okay, so just show me the hireable people. So now we've identified a small number of people who have got experience in doing things with a calendar. And I might want to go ahead and look at what he's done with the calendar. So we're going to go a bit more detail on these things. Now we can see that this guy's done a lot of stuff. He's done add-ons and everything. So that he's, he's a possibility. So I may want to contact this guy. And I've got, I've got his GitHub account. Um, I can go ahead and send him an email and say, hey, I've got this job I'd like you to do for me. Take a copy of that. And in fact, I can send him this link. So he's going to get that link. And it's going to say, hey, I found you on Scrivers. It would be really good if you could help me with this project that I've got. And another thing that you can do here, of course, is you may want to have a quick look at the things that he's actually done. So if, we, if he's done this add-on, it might be of some interest to us. I can go directly to his project. Uh, I can see it's in TypeScript. I could take a quick look at his code and see if I like the look of it. And so on. Turn all this off. Visualization a little bit, so we've got a bit less. And that's what we have for repos and projects and so on. If we take a look for me, you'll notice I've got a bunch of stuff here. This stuff at the top all came directly from GitHub. It came from my GitHub profile. But other things down here are things that I've added. So the question is, how did I add them? I have a profile here on GitHub. And in there, I've set all that stuff up. The profile looks like this. And you only need one of these. Somewhere in GitHub, it can be anywhere in any repo that you own. 
um, and it will find it and in introduce that data into your profile on Scrivers. You can also enrich data on repos as well. You can see I've got some extra stuff here, which will divert you to a website I have with instructions about how to do, do that thing. So it's really pulling together a lot of different data from different places to make it easy to find what people have done, uh, to find out if they are going to be able to help you, to find out if their code is going to be any good, if their library is going to work for you, and so on and so forth. So you can find out more about how to do all this on my website here. The link is here. And if you want to try the app, you can just try it directly here. Now, the only other thing that's left is how do you get your projects on to this? You don't have to really do anything apart from put your app script project on GitHub and of course make it public. And as long as there's an app script.json there, it will show up here within a day or two. And that's all folks.